the, the great thing about vending is you don't have to, you don't have to go every day, right? So it's, you can be very lean and, and run a pretty big, very big operation, to be honest. Um, but uh, I have, I have two guys now um, and I, there, there's, I'm trying, I'm still trying to figure out the op, uh, like uh, optimal strategy. Uh, but the gist of it is they both go out together, pre-pack the boxes together and then go out. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of work together. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got two guys and then I have a virtual assistant um, who does my bookkeeping and stuff like that um, on a, not a day-to-day, -day, but more weekly. Um, and then I have a bookkeeping service that does like, uh, like quick book stuff and stuff like that. Um, so pretty, pretty lean operation, to be honest. Do you think that you can probably take that team to like, I don't know, 80, 80, hundred locations, or do you think that you're kind of beginning to feel like you need a few more people? <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> the awkward, nervous laugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not that it's, it's more like uh, the, the truck that I have. Uh, so I have an E350 cargo van extended. If I got like a big box truck, like, uh, the, I mean, it, it's just the amount of products that we can fit. Like, so, uh, with new, when, when, when you put, so it, there's, there's two, there's like, th the, basically there's a couple different machines. So a stacker, you, you just put cases in of, of soda, right? And then a snack machine that requires a box, you got to put all the products in there. And then a glass face drink machine that requires a box, you got to put all the products in there. The, pro the thing that takes up a lot of space is the boxes. Um, and so if I just had all stackers, I mean, yeah, I could make this thing huge and it would just be all sodas in my truck. But you got to put these boxes from Costco and they're they're, they're de pretty decently sized. Yeah. Um, and so that's pretty much the limiting factor. Um, but I, I have one ace worker, um, dude, the beast. Um, I set him up. Well, he prospected it, and uh, and then I pretty much came in and closed the deal um, up in LA. He's got an account that does about eight thousand a month. He goes like once a week, um, and so he knows the business really well because uh, he has his own accounts. Like he knows how to work the machine, so I can rely on him for anything. He's he's probably. I always say like, hey, like you got to bring on people and make them eighty percent of of you. Um, I don't know. I mean, from a stocking perspective he's like 150 percent of me um he works way faster mm -hmm. from a machine standpoint not quite there maybe 80 percent. i don't know maybe less um yeah but, uh, that makes sense yeah. I, i'm i'm curious too, to take things less in the weeds and more like high level right um i think when we were chatting before like if this is the kind of thing where like you were talking about how you bought this whole condo or apartment over in san diego and like you know now vending machines are cash flowing more than your actual apartment right and there's whole conversation to be had around like, okay, the equity creation side and all of that kind of stuff too. But to kind of spare it from that, I think knowing what you know now, how many, how many months or how many years are you into this like vending business? A year and a half, two years? Yeah. Yeah. Two years, I, maybe two and some change. Two and some change. So like knowing what you know now, would you have picked the same business to go into? Um, because I think there is like some level of like some cost fallacy where like, you know, you are doing what you're doing today because it's what you've been doing for the last two and a half years, but are there yeah. like, are there certain things that you're like, ah, shit, like I'm doing it today because of cash flow as well. But if I had my options, I actually would have gone and done this instead. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if, if I had a limited liquidity, <laughs> obviously I would just go into real estate. I mean, I, I have an eye for turning a house into and making it look sexy. I, I just, I know how to do that. Um, and uh, I'm pretty good at marketing that stuff. Um, so yeah, if I had unlimited liquidity, of, of course I'd be doing that. Um, but th this, this was just more like, Hey, you can do this. Like you can fucking bootstrap this thing.